they finally did it. They are buffing Kanali and surprisingly, two of my favorite unit as well, Smokey and Frostfire. What's up, my nerd friends? So, Kanali, Smokey, and Frostfire has received a buff. And coincidentally, I actually have all these three units. And two of the unit is actually max level. I'll show you. So, they are buffing Smokey which is actually max level and max ability and also max equipment and also frostfire which is also max well not really max ability but i could do it easily actually max breakthrough and max level so you can clearly tell how much i love these two units and for me the receiving buff is honestly quite surprising i thought they would never buff smokey actually Frostfire, you know, she does receive quite a bit of, uh, I guess, complaint that she is weak. But in my opinion, she is okay. She is just a little bit niche. So for me, the receiving buff is very surprising. But Kanali, which I do not raise, I'm pretty sure. All right, I finally found Kanali. So yeah, this is my Kanali. It's uh, Ascension 1, level 26. So yeah, she was very weak and now she got buff. Will that make her actually good again? Let's find out. So Kanali, active skill Sonata of Abyss. So this was the fear active skill. It has a very long cooldown. Uh, I believe it was four turn cooldown. Oh, actually my bad. I just went ahead and checked. It was five turn cooldown. And the way you get to four turn is you have to get the breakthrough tree. So yeah, it's a very, very long cooldown active skill. And for me, it wasn't really that impactful. Sure, you get the fear effect, which is very good, but it's not really worth five cooldown. But yeah, let's see how they change it. So Kanali uh, originally will do damage to three surrounding clusters. Uh, now it's global range. Adjusted the original enhancement effect of Breakthrough 6. So originally the Breakthrough 6 is the global, but now they changed it to something else. Let me check the Breakthrough 6. So this is it. Original effect is global range. Now they adjusted change to preemptive strike. So yeah, having your active skill change the preemptive strike is pretty good, especially when you have five turn cooldown or four turn cooldown if you have breakthrough tree. But the problem with Kanali though is when you use Kanali, you mainly want to kind of fear the enemy at least. Having your cooldown on the first turn is pretty good because it does do decent chunk of damage. Actually, I believe it was 500%. No, it was 400% to all enemies. Uh, not as high as I thought, but still decent AoE damage. And Brand to Strike Active Skill that do AoE damage is actually quite useful in many game modes. Like Secret Territory, which you can use to clear these small mobs. And yeah, you don't really need the fear in that scenario. But usually, the fear does come pretty handy. So, if you don't know, her equipment skill will get you the ability to fear. So, she gained one stack of Shiver Mark whenever she used a chain combo. And every time she used one, she gained one stack. So up to five stacks and each stack will increase the active skill damage by 20 percent and using active skill will inflict fright on a numbers of enemies equivalent to the number of stacks for one round so if you have one stack you can maximum only fear one enemy if you have five stack five enemies now it used to clear all the stacks after using the active skill now it never cleared the stacks which is good, but ultimately, this doesn't really help Kanali that much, in my opinion. She's still kind of weak in terms of snipers. There is quite a lot of um, competition for sniper, actually. So, another change she got is the chain combo. It used to have three surrounding cluster range, now it's global range. So, yeah, it's good. I mean, global range is always good. It's like Paloma, where you can just like shoot everywhere and do decent amount of damage. So with the chain combo change to global range and the active skill change to global range, you can play Kanali a little bit more smart by like walking away from the enemy and still able to attack. It's honestly decent, but I'm not so sure if these will help Kanali that much. So yeah, the final buff she get is the Ascension Tree equipment skill. So original effect, pretty much the same. You get the fear effect. That's pretty much it. But the additional effect is if she has 5 stack already before using a chain combo, additional damage will be dealt to the nearest enemy. So yeah, they did not give us the numbers here. The numbers will pretty much decide whether she is good or not. So in order to get 5 stacks, you have to at least spend 5 turns using your chain combo. So you cannot get this effect right away. But if this number is good, it might actually pull Kanali back 
to the meta, maybe. If you ask me how much percentage we should need in order for Shi to be good again, I'm guessing somewhere around 500% because I'm pretty sure this equipment skill does not get affected by your tiles bonus. So walking 15 tiles do not buff this damage. Uh, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. But every time you use your chain combo, you will do additional damage which is very similar to Requiem. If you ever used her before, she will strike an enemy additional time when you use the chain combo, uh, only one enemy. But Requiem obviously will target the furthest enemy instead of the nearest one. And the one thing about Requiem though is that additional strike does get affected by the Tau bonus. This one, I'm not so sure. We have to test it out. If it actually do get buffed by the Tau bonus, it can be a little bit lower. Maybe similar to Requiem, but should be a little bit higher than Requiem or like a lot higher than Requiem because Requiem do not have this requirement of at least five turns and five turn is a long time. And ultimately, she is a unit that is excelling on clearing mobs. And currently, those kind of stages are not too hard, but it could actually have those hard stages where they are multiple enemies and they are not immune to fear and Kanali could actually be pretty useful and if the damage on this numbers is pretty good uh, if the 5 stack additional damage I actually could see Kanali being usable but definitely not OP though because yeah the, the 4 turn active skill or 5 turn if you don't have breakthrough tree is just too long and it's not even that impactful so yeah I think Kanali is still in pretty rough spot but a buff is a buff I guess Alright, the next one, Smokey, which is actually my favorite unit in terms of design. I really like white hair twin tail girls, so Smokey is actually my favorite waifu in Alchemy Star. And yeah, I always use her in my fire team, and I thought she was fine. A lot of people don't really like the fact that her teleport range is so small, so Bulldog did the right thing to buff the teleport range. So instead of two surrounding cluster, she now can teleport one additional cluster, which is actually quite big. One additional cluster is going to make a big difference for Smokey. Being able to teleport almost half a map will help you reach a lot more distance and potentially just help you close the gap on the boss for many fights. So yeah, I'm very happy for this change, but this is not the only thing she got. She also got a new breakthrough. So instead of increasing the skill damage by 50%, she will get converting one or more enemy tiles to red. It's honestly okay. I mean, I wasn't really a fan of converting the enemy tiles because, well, you can't really use it right away. But it does synergize with her kit. But it is a breakthrough 6 effect and I cannot get it. Meh. It was alright. It wasn't really like any game breaking stuff, but it would help, especially helping proccing the equipment effect, which did change. So equipment effect, original uh, smoky trigger medical kiss each time she attack an enemy with an active skill or chain combo, doing additional defend ignoring damage. And the defend ignoring damage is actually 100% of smoky attack, which is actually quite a lot. However, the downside is every time you attack, you will reduce the 20% of the damage down to minimum of 20%. So there's a mistranslation here. Uh, the original skills is actually the first time she attack an enemy, dealing additional defense ignoring damage. But the adjusted one now says that each time, but the damage will decrease when triggered repeatedly. So this was originally the Ascension 1 equipment. But after you upgrade to Ascension 2, you will get the repeat. Um, but yeah, they basically made the Ascension 1 equipment to Ascension 2 now on default. But now the Ascension 2, she also get additional line. Manticore kiss deal double damage to enemies on the red tiles. So yeah, this will buff smoky damage even more, um, which is nice. I mean, the Manticore kiss was always a good source of damage, but now she has a way to do more damage as long as the enemy is under red tiles which is not too hard but you're not going to get this effect all the time now the last part which is the ascension tree using your active skill will clear the stacks of the enemies so that the reduce part will reset so you can attack the enemy for 100 of your attack again and then you will chip down to 20 slowly by each attack 
So yeah, what's my opinion on the change? Like I said before, I think Smokey was in a pretty good spot already. My only problem with Smokey was the teleport range. Uh, it was too small, too close to the range is too small. And we had this complaint back in the day when Smokey first released. We never really got any like changes right away. So we thought, you know what, they, they are fine with Smokey. But now they actually changed it, which I'm pretty happy. And she also got some other buff, which is the uh, equipment, which was underwhelming, question mark. Uh, it was kind of underwhelming, but yeah, I wouldn't really say she's well-deserved because I think she's good already, but I'm happy. <laughs> It wasn't really a big buff, but it's a it's a nice buff, especially the range. The range is really big because in fire right now, there's not a lot of good teleporters except for Smokey. And having that range buff will help you set up your combo better or just help you gap closer, which is the main way I use Smokey anyway. All right, we have the next one. Frostfire. So yeah, Frostfire has been regarded as the weakest Osio Aurin by the community. And while that is true, I really like her. So I decided to max breakthrough and max level her. Uh, she has a very, very strong maximum breakthrough. The ability to stack the active skill damage. And yeah, in my opinion, I don't really think she did a buff. She's just very, very niche. But now she got a buff, which is actually very massive. And I'll talk about that. So, me active skill originally cost 10 vests to deal damage to one select tile within three surrounding cluster and deal 50% splash damage to four tiles in a crush shape can be cast multiple times each round as long as you have the vest. And now it changes to full screen range instead of three cluster range. This used to be a breakthrough on the breakthrough tree, but they changed it to something else, which is a big change, a massive change. Um, I'll talk about the breakthrough right now. So the breakthrough, uh, instead of the global range active skill, it changes to increase skill damage by 60%. 60 percent. 60, 60 percent increase skill damage is almost like 40 percent more damage, I think, because originally she only has 150 per hit. So yeah, this will buff her damage up to 210 per active skill initially, and this will help a lot on helping you rank up the damage because. It's actually very difficult to kill stuff with the active skill because of how little damage it does. But now you get 210 right off the bat. It's going to get a bit easier. And yeah, I really like this buff because the active skill was very weak. Before you can rack up the damage, which is how you do it with the Breakthrough 6 effect, the active skill meteor enhancement, uh, every cast increased skill damage by 10% can be cast multiple times each round. So every time you cast your active skill, it's slowly increasing the damage one by one. And you might be thinking, just 10%. How, how, how big impact could it be? It actually could be a pretty big impact if the stage have multiple mobs. Because uh, whenever you kill an enemy, you get five vis back while kill with active skill. So with this effect, bosses that spawn monsters, it's actually an upside for you because you can get your active skill damage up very easily. And the adjusted one is enhancement. So this is not replaced by the way. So don't worry about the active skill damage increased by 10% part. It is not getting replaced. This is just an add-on. Every cost increased basic attack by 3%. So instead of just having 10% increased skill damage, you also raise your basic attack by 3%, which in itself also help you do more damage with your active skill because it's basic attack and your skill damage is scaling by your basic attack. So yeah, she's just going to do way more damage now. And since it's basic attack, she will also do more damage with chain combo and of, of course normal attack as well. Yeah, Frostfire is a lot better now. Like I would say at least 30 to 40% better than the old Frostfire. And that's without even talking about the chain combo, which wasn't really a big change, but it's more like a quality of life kind of. So original fourth house uh, is two clusters, but now it changed to three clusters and it gained two vis for each hit, uh, each enemy hit. And initially it's one vis. This was never a good way to get this. The best way to, to get this is actually killing enemy with your active skill because you get five for each kill, but them changing to two could actually help a little bit. And the eight house uh, used to be three starting clusters. Now it changed to four cluster instead. I mean, at this point, four cluster is basically the whole map. Four cluster is so freaking big. I don't think people realize how big is four clusters. It's just almost the whole map, uh, at, at least when you're standing in the middle. And the 13 tile chain combo now get you to this 
instead of Van Vest, which is like, yeah. It wasn't really a big change, but it's a nice little touch up uh, that get you more Vest because Vest is a very central part of Frostfire. And I want people to not mistake Frostfire as being like, oh, now you must raise Frostfire. Not really, because she was always a niche character and having the buff, she will continue being that niche character that deal with mobs really well. Uh, especially uh, with stages that's constantly spawning mobs because you need that. You need that to increase your uh, basic attack. You need that to increase your skill damage. It's not a very... How can I say? It's not It's not a really general, really good character, but on the right stage, Frostfire is just godly. And she's going to be better. Crazy. But yeah, that is all the buff we will get on, I think, June 2, after the updates. And after the update, I will try them out one by one. So, Kanali, Smokey, and Frostfire, and see how they fare, actually. I'm very, very curious about Kanali because... Honestly, the the numbers on this one will make or break Kanali. The other buff she gotten wasn't really going to make her good, but this one, this one might might actually make her good. So yeah, what do you think about the buff on these three units? Were you expecting the buffs or were you excited? Let me know in the comments down below. And that's it for me today. I'll see y'all next video. Peace.